What's up guys? Coach Speens back with another Whiteboard Wednesday. Today we are going to be blending some of the diet principles that we went over these past few weeks and getting down into a little bit more detailed version um, of a certain scenario. And that scenario is going to be our pre-training meal. Um, we're going to be blending uh, the diet principle nutrient timing. We're going to be blending macronutrient amounts. And then we're also going to be blending food composition. We're going to be kind of bringing all those factors together to see how this is going to affect our pre-training meal, um, depending on when we get that pre-training meal. So before we dive in to kind of our main topic, we're going to go over a little bit of food composition 101 for our different types of foods that we're gonna be getting in this pre-training meal. Um, there's four different things we're gonna be going over. Um, that's high glycemic carbs, lower glycemic carbs, animal protein sources, and natural fat sources. Um, these are the four kind of food composition components that we're gonna be focusing on um, for this pre-training meal. Uh, we're going to do a quick refresher. The, uh, the first one is the high glycemic carbs, and these are going to be quick digesting carbs that are going to result in a quick blood sugar spike. So they're going to be quick digesting, and it's going to result in a lot of blood sugar kind of getting into the bloodstream quickly. So that means we're going to be able to use it for fuel and break it down to be used as fuel quickly. Um, some examples would be sports drinks, honey, fat-free candy, watermelon, white bagels, jams, jellies, white rice, potatoes, um, fruit juice, to name a few. Um, and like I said, so these are going to be things that are digesting quickly. Next one are going to be lower glycemic carbohydrates, um, and these are going to be kind of the opposite of these higher glycemic carbs. Uh, they're going to be slower digesting, and they're going to result in a slow blood sugar release or kind of a gradual blood sugar increase. Um, some examples would be brown rice, all brand cereal, whole grain bread, carrots, pears, peaches, oranges, apples, um, low fat yogurt, to name a few. Um, next one is going to be animal protein sources. If you remember from our food composition episode, we're going to opt for animal protein sources over plant protein sources for a variety of reasons that we're not going to get into in today's video. Um, but in terms of animal protein sources, we want to minimize fat and prioritize digestion, digestion speed as we get closer to training. Um, so some examples of some animal protein sources would be chicken breasts, egg whites, steak, fish, ground beef, turkey, um, chicken thighs if we're a little bit further out from training because they're higher in fat content, um, Greek yogurt, uh, non-fat if it's close to training, and then whey protein. Um, that's going to be a super fast digesting protein. Next one will be natural fat sources. If you remember from our food composition video, we want to opt for natural fat sources as opposed to processed oils and fats. Um, some examples of these would be like eggs, grass-fed butter, coconut oil, olive oil, nuts, nut butters, um, and avocados. So now that we have kind of refreshed ourselves on our food composition, let's go into our pre-training meal and some of the considerations and things that we're going to kind of tweak depending on when we're getting this meal. Um, so we've got three different scenarios. One is if we get this meal around four hours before training. The next one is if we get it around two hours before training. And the final one is if we get it around 30 to 60 minutes before training. Um, one big trend to notice is that our high glycemic carb um, amount is going to be increasing the closer we get to training. So the, if you, um, let's say if you're four hours out from training, you're going to have a moderate amount of high glycemic carbs, but you're going to have a higher amount of lower glycemic carbs because we want to digest those carbs and have a slow blood sugar increase um, over time. So that way you've got enough carbs for normal function before training, but then you still have blood sugar um, or sh kind of glucose in the blood during that training session. 
Um, next, we're gonna be having your kind of allotted amount of animal protein. Um, so if you're shooting for 200 grams in the day and you eat five meals a day, this is gonna have about a fifth of that. So it's gonna want to be around 40 grams of protein. Um, then your natural fats, we're gonna have, um, if you're four hours out, then we're gonna have about your normal amount of fats that you would get per meal. Um, now as we move closer to your training, you're gonna be about two hours out. Um, one thing to notice is your fat content is coming down. We're gonna be putting much less emphasis on the fats. Your animal protein amount is gonna stay pretty similar. We may decrease it just a little bit. Um, depending on the types of protein that you're getting and the digestion speeds associated with those. Um, and then as far as your carbohydrates go, you're gonna be increasing the amount of high glycemic carbs and decreasing the amount of the low glycemic carbs just a little bit. Um, and then finally, if you are just getting a quick snack and you don't have much time before training, um, let's say you've had a busy day and you don't have much time, so you're kind of running a training, um, if you're on a short time, we're going to, one, really be prioritizing digestion speeds. So we want to opt for liquids over solid foods. And then second, we want to prioritize high glycemic carbs. Um, so all of your carbs in this window should be coming from high glycemic options. Uh, we're going to be getting a little bit of protein. That way we can maintain kind of an anabolic state and prevent a catabolic state during training, and then we really want to minimize fats as much as possible. Um, if they're still in there, it's not the end of the world, but we really want to minimize those as much as possible. Um, so this is definitely a little bit more detailed and kind of a more advanced um, tactic for your nutrient timing, um, but for some of you guys and girls who have got it dialed down, um, I want to get a little bit more in depth so that way you can learn how to blend some of those diet principles that we've been talking about these past few weeks. Um, next week we're going to be jumping in, well, we're kind of going to be staying in this idea of blending multiple diet principles. Um, but we're going to be focusing more on how uh, your training intensity and duration is going to affect your pre-training meal. Um, if you guys have any questions on this, head over to our forum on our website and log in and you guys can leave your questions and we'll get into some dialogue over there if you have any questions, comments, or concerns. Um, but if not, I will see you all next Wednesday. Peace.